Now more than ever, our mirrorless cameras capture incredible video content right out of the box. The problem is that most photographers are intimidated by the process of learning how to create video content. Capturing visual pleasing video content requires understanding two related but different settings, frame rate and shutter speed. Photographers often confuse the two. Today, I'm going to help you figure out how to set the best frame rate and shutter speed for capturing video. To the human eye, film and video seem to play as one continuous recording, but in actuality, cameras record pictures of multiple images called frames. These frames are played back at such a fast rate that they appear to be in fluid motion. Frame rate is the measurement of how quickly a number of frames appear within a second, which is why it's called frames per second. Motion pictures, TV broadcasts, streaming video content, and even smartphones use the standard frame rate of 24 frames a second. This speed accounts for a phenomenon called motion blur, an optical effect that makes moving objects look out of focus due to quick movement. Let's talk about the move to the 24 frames a second as a standard. Two significant factors prompted the adoption of 24 frames a second as the industry standard. One was the advent of sound synchronization and two was TV broadcast. Earlier attempts to incorporate sound into film proved unfruitful. By the late 1920s, the phonograph and similar inventions allowed Hollywood to sync audio during playback, starting with the 1927's The Jazz Singer. As image and sound in film became synonymous, filmmakers began to move away from the 16 frames a second of the silent film era to 24 frames a second, which was the best frame rate for sound compression while using the least possible amount of film. In the 50s, 30 frames a second became the norm for analog TV broadcasts in North America, Japan, and South America. At the same time, Europe and Africa adopted 25 frames a second due to the different video frame rates based on Hertz power, the NTSC and PAL respectively. It's time to talk about how shutter speed and frame rate connect. Frame rate and shutter speed are often mistaken as interchangeable. They aren't, but they do share a close relationship. Shutter speed is a measurement in seconds of how long the shutter, which is what controls the amount of light entering the camera, is open. The faster the shutter speed, the lower amount of light that will be exposed to the film or digital sensor. There are many different types of shutters, from focal plane shutters found in DSLRs to leaf shutters found on medium and larger format cameras. However, for video, the most common shutter is going to be an electronic one, though film cameras still use a rotating disc for their light control. Electronic shutters have the ability to set higher or lower shutter speeds in comparison to their manual shutters, which must be physically attached. As a rule, to obtain realistic movement that the human eye is used to seeing, the shutter speed needs to be twice the frame rate. In video, this is typically a fraction of a second like 1 48th of a second or 1 60th of a second. Film motion picture cameras use a rotary disc shutter to achieve their exposure times, with shutter speed indicated as a shutter angle. Video captured at 24 frames a second with a shutter angle of 180 degrees exposes each frame for half the time. The rotating disc is the most often used type of shutter in the film industry. It has a single constant shutter speed and instead of changing the speed, filmmakers adjust the shape or angle of the shutter by 15 degree intervals. The larger the angle, the more light can pass through. Similar to shutter speeds, the ratio between angle and light is interrelated. Divide or multiply the angle and it will do the same for the light. Most film cameras use shutter angles ranging from 0 to 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, you get the center cinematic look we recognize from the big screen, as it correlates to precisely half the time that each frame takes to play in one second. They realize that at a 24 frames a second, 180 degrees shutter angle, it will give you the most best motion blur that's realistic to the human eye. Shutter angle is also the reason that when filming at higher frame rates, creators will need to account for more lighting to achieve the same exposure as shooting at lower frame rates. In still photography, photographers often aim to freeze motion and provide razor sharp images. In scenes that contain movement, this is achieved with higher shutter speeds, anywhere from 250th of a second all the way up to 8,000th of a second. 
Video is different though. Using higher shutter speeds with video content does freeze motion on each frame, resulting in very crisp individual images. However, when played back at a standard video frame rate, the action can appear hyper realistic and give a viewer a jittery unsettling feeling that could work for for situations like fast paced uh, scenarios like car scenes fighting scenes etc running but it really is selective and not often used as a standard I'll be going over more in depth of when to use the different frame rates and shutter speeds in a future video if you have any questions comments concerns please post your comments down below come on let me hear them and if you haven't already shame on you come and follow me on all my other social medias so instagram facebook threads everywhere yes you can find those links in my description section and if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more don't forget to press that like that share subscribe and yes smash that bell icon to get notifications for my upcoming videos i'm robert silver and until next time keep shooting and stay creative